Okay, this is another Lat 44 outdoor video about harvesting wild edibles. In this case, it's more of a medicinal than an edible. Uh, the camera is zoomed on some Korean ginseng. And um, it's kind of all over the place here. And uh, I'm going to go through a little bit. And uh, here, uh, okay. All righty. Um, Step on them. There are bunches of them. Okay. Um, my background with the Korean ginseng. Uh, many years ago, I read a book called North American Ginseng by Richard Heffern. And I, I'm sure the book is out of print. Um, and I wish I'd, I'd saved a copy. And it was quite some time after that that I ever used ginseng. So I was on the West Coast. And of course, on the Pacific Rim, you have all kinds of Asian culture um, available. And so I began to use ginseng in different forms. And um, pill from the root, but normally um, it was a tea that I bought. It was ginseng, it was ground up. Okay, um, we're into September, so the plants aren't looking real great. You can see they're bug chewed, they've been stepped on. The ground's all tore up around here where squirrels and, and such have been uh, working. I mean, this is harvest season. Um, so I'm gonna give you a little bit. I picked one of these just because it was injured. Here's the better specimen. So you will see many look-alikes. See if I can get that leaf pattern out there. Um, so you will see five leaves. Um, possibly there could be less who knows like this plant I can see it's been broken off and um, a bunch of leaves have been broken off the real telltale sign is let's see if I can do this without breaking the plant is that all four leaves or all three leaf stems come all whirled right from the main stem all three, not two on two opposing and, and one somewhere else. All three will come out of the plant right there and the, right from the same spot. Um, also, the roots grow horizontal, um, as you can see here. So normally when I harvest some ginseng, I stick my finger in the ground and I pry around and, and poke around and tell what the size of the root is and and of course if it's too small I don't harvest the plant this one I pulled just because it was already damaged um, I'm not sure what happened to it um, also uh, I haven't found that the stems of these plants are a very good indicator of the root size and so I've found smaller stems with the same size roots. This one has a little smaller stem and the root is bigger. And this plant has taken a beaten. It's missing one whole leaf stem. It's missing, I see leaves broke off. I don't know if you can see it. This stem that comes from the base of the plant next to the main stem, looks like little brown needles. Um, this is the seed stem, the fruit will be on this stem and it has its own stem. Um, doesn't share a stem with, with any of these leaves. Uh, the berries I found, I think I've, the ones I found have always been red when they are, are maturity. Of course, in this time of year, I haven't found any berries. Um, anyways, here's a ginseng. This is very small. Um, I'm not going to dig. It's really weird because this is a much smaller stem, smaller plant, and I have my finger in the ground, and I can tell that the root just isn't that much smaller than the bigger plants. Okay, I just haven't found any rhyme or reason. Um, another note um, is...
these things are not soft usually. I don't know if I could have been harvesting these early in the season and if they would be more more uh, tender. I mean, it's not a chunk of wood, but... Um, and it has a little bit of a more bitey smell than ginseng that I have purchased in the, the market of the ginseng. And so, anyways, another point being, in the past, when I've collected some ginseng, it was a lot of work mincing uh, the ginseng up, dry it and, and mince it up for making a tea. That's the only way I have used this ginseng. And so, um, this one, it is a bigger plant. The root isn't big, much bigger, if, if bigger at all. This one, I notice, is pretty tough. It's not terrible, but I get into get in there and it's and it's softer mm. it really does have a, a more bitey flavor than the, the commercial stuff I bought um, and also I won't go harvesting around here just because I've been walking around and the plants um, of course it's late in the season. They've they're taking a beating. It's the end of their season. Their leaves are looking rough. Animals are giving them a good workout, and so um, I just har harvested these two, for examples, because they were already damaged. And um, and I may just keep this one and steep a tea from it. Um, also, some more background. Um, I talked to a doctor about ginseng because I had not researched ginseng and I just really didn't know much about it. And I said, I believed ginseng is my placebo. And I think just the power of suggestion that my body just felt better and, um, and that it was all mind over matter. And I said, except I took one at work and I remembered that I took it and and my, my body felt better. I, on days I don't remember what I took before work, my body felt better. So I said, I think it's a placebo. And the doctor said, no, it isn't. Ginseng is a very um, active compound. And so he didn't say, say more on the matter. Um, and so anyways, my body likes ginseng. That's why I look for it. And something you will find, if I get an example, is until you start looking for ginseng, you may not notice how many plants can be imitators and they will have similar, very, very similar uh, leaf patterns. Just all kinds of plants will have a similar leaf pattern to the ginseng. So anyways, I'm scouting around, crawling around in the dirt looking for North American ginseng. and. Um, uh, Korean ginseng, and um, which is, is grows all over Michigan. It doesn't like western sun. It doesn't like a lot of sun. It's not a plant that craves the sun, and um, and that'll help you find it. And um, and so on a roadside, you know, it would be on the west side of the road, so it's not getting the western sun. It'll get the eastern sun. And when you do find it, quite likely there will be many. And I'm going to get up and I'm going to just take a moment with the camera and start counting. And I will... Take a look around. Um, okay. So, and I will zoom. Do some zooms. That is one. Two, three, there's one that's damaged, four, where's that thing, I lost it, uh, oh, there it is, five, let's head a look off to my left, there's a very small one. Very small one right behind me. That one's whooped. That one 
has taken a beating. So anyways, I'm going to look out there. That is ginseng on this hillside. Um, way over, that is ginseng. Anyways, it's all over the place when you find it. And um, I don't find that uh, I can judge a plant and tell if it's going to be large or not. And so, anyways, from Lat 44 Outdoor, that's my little take on uh, Korean ginseng that I find in here in Michigan. Thanks viewers and subscribers, and thanks a bunch for sharing my videos as well as subscribing. From 44 degrees north latitude, that's my fall harvest North American ginseng. Thanks.